careful. I will. Let me know what you're doing. I will. Okay. Bye. You know what I'm gonna do? What? Whatever I want. Better late than never. I don't know how long my dad's had these, but he's had them. He had them for a long time. What kind of leather was that? Must have been hell. Oh, they put them in the bushes, you know that. I, I, you told me on a book or a magazine. Magazine, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Out of Santa Fe, is that right? Yeah. They didn't charge me a dime. They drove all the way down here, and I've gotten some orders out of that. Have you really? Yeah. You'll probably get some orders out of this. Well, I hope you don't charge, charge me a lot of money. For Just that. wholesale it to me. <laughs> I'll resell it and make a dime. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, James. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Order after 11. My wife bought me this because of a viewer's comment. I pulled out my phone to get check the time and he said, I thought you'd pull out an old fashioned pocket watch. And I told my wife that, so she bought me this. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, yeah. <laughs> Day before yesterday, I, my, we've had a bad month. My sister passed away here a couple weeks ago. Or it's been almost a month ago. And then my wife's uncle passed away back in, in St. Louis, Missouri. So I took her down to put her on a plane day before yesterday to fly out to, uh, to Missouri to go to the services. And I came back with, they still don't know when they're gonna have my sister's services. And uh, so I came back and, and I thought, well, I got some time. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna pack me in a remote camp up here. And this is, this is still desert, but it's higher desert than what I've been in down in there. This is pretty good country. It takes about two hours to get up in here driving. And then I'm probably gonna go in about another five or six miles into some roadless country and set up a, a, a camp that I can ride to and stay to. And the plan was, yesterday to come get up here and set up the camp spend the night and hunt for a couple days and then go back i gotta be back out tomorrow i gotta pick up my wife at the airport at two o'clock if i don't get that done i'll probably get in a lot of trouble so she'll have to buy an uber and there ain't no telling how much it costs for an uber to get her from, <laughs> from el paso back home so so I, and so I, but I planned yesterday to, to, to go up there and set up camp. Well, right at the last minute, I had everything just about loaded up and ready to go. And my dad calls and said, hey, uh, Dave, your brother-in-law, which was my sister's husband, and her kids, Jason and Robert, and Robert's out of California. He flew into Albuquerque. They're coming down to see us. And uh, we sure would like for you to stay and, and visit with them. And, and it was something I needed to do. So... So I stayed and I went out to eat with them, visited with them and everything. Then I got up this morning, the wind was blowing. It was supposed to be a nasty day. And I said, well, I said, I'll just load everything up. I, got, uh, I had a new pair of shaps made. My dad had given me an old pair of shaps and uh, I had a new pair of shaps made. And I thought, well, I'll just load everything up and, and go by James's, James Morris and pick up these new shaps. And uh, weather wasn't that bad. And I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and drive on up here. So it took me about, an hour and a half from James's to get up here. So now I'm here, the weather's beautiful. Just got a little slight breeze. I got old Jet Johnson packed up with just, he just got a wood burning stove, got my snow tracker tent, 
and blanket and then a, a, an old sleeping bag that I'll use as a as a ground mat to, to put my other sleeping bag on. I don't take it, I haul it back and forth with me and I don't have it with me right now. And uh, so I'm gonna go up there. So the, the goal today is just to set up that tent. I'm riding right through this gap and I'll take a left-hand turn and then I'll ride up a canyon and up that canyon, I don't know, a few miles. Back in deer season, me and my nephew went up there and uh, we camped, we just, he didn't have a mule to ride. And so I said, well, I'm not gonna ride a mule and make you walk, even though he is a lot younger than me. I said, we'll just pack one mule. So what we did is we just packed Jet Johnson and led him. And uh, we went up there and set up a camp and stay. That'd probably be another video if you guys wanna see it. Leave a comment down below. It wasn't a successful deer hunt, but it's a successful camping trip. We had a good time. Anyway, I brought the ladies and Timmy today. And uh, yeah, shoot, onward and upward. There's an old rickety gate right up here that I'll go through. I do always like to lead the mules for, for a little while when I first start out. Kind of loosens them up, loosens me up. And if you got any boogers in them, It'll usually show up. Oop, and it's good exercise. I don't know how many miles it is back here. Probably about, I'm gonna say maybe five. Not that far though. It's about, I think it's about 50 degrees right now. Beautiful, beautiful. Slight, cool breeze. I mean, that breeze is, makes it real nice. About, about four or five miles an hour maybe. I hope, I hope there where I want to camp is gonna have, or where I want to set up my camp is still gonna have water. It had water when me and my nephew were down here deer hunting. Man, it is beautiful country, look at that. One of these days, I'll make the videos of 2016. I, uh, I camped up this canyon. I stayed up there, I set up. I just cowboy camped and it was in the winter. It was colder than a witch's you know what. And uh, I stayed up there and the wind blew. And, <laughs> it was it was something. I had a good time though. How's old Jed Johnson doing? He's that's a real light load. There's probably only 30 pounds on each side, and that top pack only consists of an old sleeping bag that I throw down as a ground cover for my good sleeping bag when I bring it. So he ain't carrying no weight. He needs a job in his old age though. He likes to go. So right up there, the top of that mountain, right up there. See that crow flying? That mountain behind him up on top. It was, let's see, it was, I can't remember what day it was. I think it was Tuesday. Today's Friday, it was Tuesday. You know, I realized after hearing about my sister, you know, after you have somebody close to you pass away, my sister passed away. You know, it dawns on you, you know, I'm 60 years old and it kind of dawns on you that you're not promised tomorrow. What you have is today and, and right now. That's all you got. So I was out early that morning at the buggy with the all oh, bunch of the male dogs just kind of exercising. I'm going up there where I, you know, I trailed a bobcat around up there and just mainly just getting them out. And it just kind of dawned on me. I thought, man, I, I got to get out of this place. So I took off. Shoot, I took off at about noon or something, drove to the other side of this mountain. And uh, I had a little old camera I wanted to put up there on a place where I'd seen where a lion had passed through there and scraped before. So I thought, I, and you know, I got up there and I had to kind of beat the, the darkness, you know, it was gonna get dark. And, and I got up there, I. I beat it and I got my camera hung and everything, got back. I had to ride back after dark, but it wasn't bad. At least I got out, you know, and that was the main thing because I'd been, just been 
not having enough time and besides not having enough time not having a lot of gumption just kind of kind of uh, I don't know just kind of feeling flat but I feel good now honey I'm home <laughs> a nice bed in there Oh, Agnes goes through there looking sideways out of the corner of her eyes, snorting a little bit. Like she's just waiting for something to jump out and get a hold of her. She don't let it get to her though. She kind of holds her, her, her. What do they call it? She holds her composure. Water and ice, boys. A little bit of wind up here too. Bobcat or lion? I think that's a little lion scratch. She's trying to. Widowmaker right there. I think there's where the other trail goes out right up right up through there. There's water down here in the bottom. I think me and my nephew camped right up there somewhere. Let me go look. Our problem was when we got here, we got in here after dark. And we didn't locate the best camp spot, but we we got a good one. It wasn't the best, but it was a good one. It worked, let's put it that way. That's where it was, right there. I'll plug in some video right here showing it. Yep, yep. But when we packed up to leave, I found a better camp spot right over on the other side of the creek. And it gets cold up here, that little creek freezes up and stays frozen. Yep. 
right here. This will do. Mm -hmm. I like it. This will do. Protection from the wind. Morning sunlight. Way off the beaten path. See how far it was back in here. Ah, 5.12 miles. So right at five miles, like I thought. Pick out a spot to throw my tent. I think I'll put my tent way back in there. Got firewood. This will work. Twenty-four. Didn't take that long. I got a little fire pit built. Got my tent up and staked real good. I think it'll hold out in the wind. I'll leave this chair here. I'll put it inside the tent. I'll take my mani tarp, take my panniards, probably take that wool blanket, and that way I can use it to balance out my panniards on one side with the put the mat put the mani tarp on one side, put the wool blanket and the and the lash rope on the other, and that should balance it out pretty good. I won't tie it down. Got the tent staked out real good. Got my wood burning stove set up and some wood. Just threw that old sleeping bag in there just in case. Got my 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 tag. <laughs> All right, put everything up and let's get out of here.
the way new shops look. I feel like a dude from town. They need a little blood and dirt and stuff on them. But they're nice. I like them. They're real thin and light. I don't like those big old Mexican style shaps those guys wear. Probably good in mesquites and everything. These are more what I would call leggings. Not those sissy girl leggings that they wear like yoga girls wear. <laughs> They changed my wife's flight. Comes out tomorrow. She'll be at the airport at 10. That's better, as long as I can get out of here, which I can. I need a name for that camp. What can I call it? Camp, Camp Wobble Gone. <laughs> what do you call it? It's a pretty neat place. Yeah. We'll get through. Let's check the stats. I know it was, it was five, a little over five miles up there, but I came back in a different way. I, I bushwhacked through that old nasty brushy country, but it should have saved a little bit of mileage, but we'll see. Yeah, well, round trips 9.99 miles, so 10 miles. Elevation here is 5,687 feet. Time is 6.09, is it? No, it's not 6.09, is it 6.09? No, it's 5.20. Yeah, time of day, 5.20. Oh, I was out six hours. I was out six hours and nine minutes. Moving time, or moving average was 2.9 miles an hour. That was pretty good. I, I, I can set, the, I set that tent up in about 35 minutes. So that's not really that bad. Got my wood cut. Everything's ready. I can access that place from further. This is, this is the closest to get to it by driving, but it's a terrible drive. But I can, I, there's like five different ways I can access it from different points. That would be about 15 mile rides in. That would be a lot better, a lot better mule riding, a lot less driving, be better. So, but it's a good day. 